At Paris-Nice, Olaf Coy once again defeated Mass Pedersen with a rapid late dash. Yet it's the Dane in possession of the Maillot Vert. The former world champion would love to finally win, but the Co sur Lou means it'll be a tough day to master. Instead, the battle for polka dots could hot up. I think uh, today will be a really hard day and um, a big chance for the breakaway. For me, uh, it would be really nice uh, that I can be uh, in the breakaway. Um, it's my last chance if I see the, the really hard weekend, so hopefully uh, I'm in the break. Ah, tout pour le maillot, oui et non, j'ai envie de dire. Euh, le principal, c'est d'avoir des bonnes cartes à l'avant, donc euh, moi ou euh, d'autres grimpeurs comme euh, Jordan ou Pierre. Après, si, on, euh, si je peux marquer des points pour le maillot de la montagne, ça sera, ça sera du bonus, mais avant tout, être devant pour, euh, pour jouer quelque chose de gros. Lidl Trek with more than one card to play, Pedersen's compatriot 2, third on Montbruy, GC outsider Mathias Skermusse. Ah, si c'était Mass au micro, il dirait « vous allez voir à la télé ». On espère pouvoir placer une carte sur chaque scénario. Maintenant, il euh, y, y a le plan idéal et il y a comment ça va se dérouler. La pluie, ça va être, euh, la pluie ou la neige, on ne sait pas encore, ça va être euh, aussi euh, déterminant en fonction de l'étape. Mais euh, bon, on sait que Mats, il est très bon aussi sous, sous des conditions comme ça. Euh, Mathias, ça ne devrait pas poser de problème non plus. Donc euh, voilà, on espère surtout passer une, une... que ça se finisse bien pour nous. Quoi. Luke Plapp, a surprise in yellow. Jaco Alula will want to keep him in the jersey. The main challenge to control the Australians' rivals. If you're a betting man, Remco's a pretty good one to bet on when it comes to aggression, and uh, he wants bonus seconds. He wants to split the group as much as he can, and uh, I think all eyes are on him. But I think Skilmosa as well. I think Skilmosa has great condition. It's a bonus for, for Plappy to be in the yellow jersey, but uh, he'll do all he can to defend that jersey today. Welcome to the longest stage of this Paris-Nice, nearly 200 kilometers at the depart from Sisteron towards the imposing Cours sur Lou. The winding roads will be punctured by climbs, offering daring riders the opportunity to try their luck. After four category climbs, it'll be a challenging 19% gradient up the Cours sur Lou before a loop back to the finish. The King of the Mountain and GC classification certainly in play. It promises to be an exciting day six. A cold day greeted the Paris-Nice peloton in Les Alpes de Haute-Provence and Alpes Maritimes, and news of a tweak to tomorrow's Queen stage, a strong chance of snow in Oron, leading to a shortened stage, a finish move south to Madon Dutel. Back to the present, and any attempt to form a breakaway initially given short thrift by the peloton. Eventually one did stick, building around a minute. The best place escapé was Intermarchwanti's George Zimmerman, the German though nearly five minutes down in the GC. Also in the break, stage three yellow jersey Lawrence Pithy with the man who, two days ago, was hunting King of the Mountain Mathieu Bourgado up Montbruy. Christian Scaloni, though, failing to make much up on the Frenchman, who gobbled up early points. 39 in total for Burgado, eight clear of his Astana rival, with Santiago Butrago third with 20 points. Meanwhile, Mas Pedersen trying to prove his teammate Julien Bernard right. Yet disappointing sight for the breakaway, the strength of the peloton had them in sight at the Col de Gourdon. Ineos, power of old, more than 40 kilometers an hour, the pace stretching the peloton and would gobble up the final two with a kilometer from the summit. Bourgado fought gallantly. He only had Marco Haller clinging to his wheel. Yet it gave the total energy man a wee breather. But in the end, a clean sprint between him and Scaloni. And it's a huge, huge effort from Mathieu Borgado for those mountains points. He takes three of the four climbs they've been over so far today. Scaroni for the deficit for him. So another net two-point gain. So it's five against three on that top of the hill. Both digging deep, but Borgado strengthening his position. Five additional King of the Mountain points and ten better than his Italian rival. On to the descent after the damage to the legs done. Brief moment of panic, but Remco, Evenepoel and Plapp making it across. Approaching the finishing line, 
although they would pass through before climbing La Côte sur Lou. 1.8 kilometers and 10% gradients. The circuit beginning. The Primoz Roglic finally coming to life. Big play here from the Bora Hansgro squad. Look at this. Roglic is trying to put the cat among the pigeons. Brandon McNulty tracking. And Santiago Butrago also following the Slovenian's move. Clap still fighting to hold on to the Mai Jaune. It didn't stick, but as they regroup, Matteo Jorgensen attacking with a kilometer from the summit. A fine effort from the American who lives locally when in Europe, striking out to lay down the biggest gap up the climb. And with 15 seconds, Jorgensen began to descend. Then a nightmare moment for the man who started second in the GC. Demands a late, oh, right is down at so. Crumbs and unfortunately it was Biotrago that hits the deck there. Not just sliding, the Colombian soon saw his chain fall along with his GC hopes. Meanwhile, Skelmusa and McNulty helping each other to join the head of the race. Successfully crossing on the approach to the bonus sprint at Tourette Solu, the yellow jersey group being left behind. Jorgensen hadn't run down his accelerator. The Visma Lisa bike rider grabbing six bonus seconds, Skelmusa four and McNulty two. The trio working superbly, but who had the firepower to win? The finish line will be in evidence as Skelmusa launches first as McNulty tries to respond. It's Jorgensen that's going to be second, surely, but Skelmusa is going to eat this one alive to take stage honours. He's got bike lengths of an advantage as uh, Jorgensen and McNulty are distanced. And uh, McNulty might just get over Jorgensen to take the useful bonus seconds, but going to get stage honours on the day. Matthias Skelmusa gets the victory on stage six into La Col sur Lou. Inform Danish champion with plenty left in the tank. Matthias Skelmusa was third ahead of Evenepoel on Mont Bruy, but the Lidl Trek leader this time rising to the top. A first win of this season and a second World Tour win after one en route to winning the Tour de Suisse last year. Yeah, I love to race uh, in France and especially this area. Uh, I had an emotional win in uh, Hodvar last year. We was really close to here also, and um, yeah, I just love racing in this area, and it's the first of the year for me, and that's uh, always a special one. A fantastic showing from Skelmusa to leave American duo McNulty and Jorgensen in his dust. Remco Evenepoel, the best of the rest. Roglic down in ninth, just ahead of Egan Bernal. But it's McNulty back in yellow after another great day for UAE. Compatriot Jorgensen 23 seconds behind, Plap now third. Skelmusa back in contention, less than a minute adrift. On a day of double Danish delights, Lidl Trek with Mas Pedersen in green still. A four point advantage then over Pithy. A tremendous effort from Bourgado sees the Frenchman with a 10 point cushion. Hard work to keep Scaloni at a distance. Only the second time the white jersey doesn't also lead the race, Jorgensen taking it up, 11 seconds on Plap. Tomorrow, not the adventure hoped for, the stage shortened somewhat, and no ascent from the Colmian. The favourites, though, should have a great time.